Today we are back with our MKS Skipper Board Install Part 2. Today is all about Clipper. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we're going to continue on with our MKS Skipper Board Install. And today is all about Clipper. Now, there's a lot of different parts to Clipper, but what I'm talking about here is the portion that you have to compile and then flash to your MCU on your 3D printer board to make it work. Depending on the firmware that you're currently using, this might replace your firmware. And on that note, the MKS Skipper Board comes already flashed with Clipper. So a lot of what we're talking about today, you don't need to do. But I want to run through the process just in case you're not using one of these boards or you need to know how to correct it if something were to go wrong or even update it. So we're going to walk through that step by step. I do have a lot of other videos about Clipper installing it manually. Also, the last video we did, we used Kaya. That helps you install it, but you still have to flash it manually like we're going to do today. So hopefully I'm going to get you all the information that you need. We are going to start this video by setting up some of the hardware. We need to put some drivers on the board, as well as do a couple of other things that are going to help us troubleshoot the config down the road. So let's get into it, and we'll start looking at the board and get our drivers installed. So before we get started today, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of hardware setup. We're going to need some stepper drivers, so I want to show you how to do those jumpers, and we're going to need some thermistors. Also, I'm going to show you how to use that diag pin to do centerless homing, because the printer we're going to use is going to use that for X and Y. So like a lot of these boards, if you want to use standalone mode, regular mode, for like an A4988, you would set the multi-stepping through these three jumpers, these three sets right here. All of them on is 16 times. For a TMC, if it's standalone, most of them, it's just these two right here. So you'd put those on to set it 16 times. Whatever driver you're using, you know, consult a manual on how that wants to be jumped out, but that's how you'd use that. For UART mode, that's the mode where we can talk to the driver through the board and set things like voltage. We want these two pins right here. And this board comes with a lot of extra jumpers, so we'll just put that on for all four drivers. So there's all four jumpers. We're going to use standalone mode on all four. That doesn't mean you have to use centerless homing, but it means you can. And the MKS drivers have that extra diag pin on them, so it's not very easy to actually get these plugged in wrong. You have these two pins right here. Just line those up. So we'll go ahead and plug in all four of our 2209s. Remember, these are MKS branded. Yours might be a bit different. So there's all four drivers installed. And then go ahead and put your heat sinks on. These are the extra wide ones. Just be really careful, as always. Don't ground out any of your pins with that heat sink. All four heat sinks are on. I am going to be using this board for my SK Go, and it currently only needs four drivers. But again, you can expand to seven if you'd like. And we'll move down here a bit. We have these pins. This is the diag pin to enable it for all seven drivers. This is X and Y right here. So we're going to use sensorless homing, so we're going to go ahead and cap these two. So we're good with these two on. And the only other thing I want to do is plug in a couple of thermistors. Now I just grabbed a couple of hundred Ks that I had in the bin. The reason why I do this is because Clipper is going to error out if it can't see at least one of the heaters, usually heater zero for the hot end. So we want to plug that in so we don't have this installed yet so that we can mess with the configuration without seeing it throw errors. So I'm just going to do the first extruder, the hot end, and the bed, just to make sure because I don't know what this configuration's like. Heater zero is this first one right here. We'll plug that in. And then the heat bed thermistor is all the way on the other end. Remember, you do have heater zero, one and two, and the bed. This is just going to make our life a whole lot easier as we configure the CFG file. So there's just the bare minimum hardware things that we have to tackle before we can start configuring Clipper. You're going to get a lot of errors if you don't do things like this ahead of time. There's a lot more work to do, but hopefully that will be in video three. We'll see where that goes. But now let's jump into Putty and start taking a look at compiling Clipper. Now we're going to start like, taking a look at Clipper. We're going to run some commands in Putty just so I can show you where everything's at. But remember this time we're dealing with Clipper, not the system. So we're going to use that MKS login. Again, same password, MakerBase. And also keep in mind, we have Fluid here. The printer's up and running. So whatever is on the MCU right now works. Whatever MakerBase flashed to it, that's no issue at all. But 
we want to reproduce the steps in case you were to have to reflash it. I'm just going to show you the process. So since we're in that MKS home directory, I just did the LS. These are where all your configuration files are for Clipper, Kaya, all that good stuff. So we're just going to CD into Clipper. And we'll do an LS again to see what's in there. Now normally, if you were to have to do this, you would have to get do a git clone, run the Clipper install, compile it, all that good stuff. They've already done all that for you, and Kaya does help. But still, in this configuration, even though we have a Raspberry Pi-like environment on the board, as well as our MCU, you can't talk directly to them. You still have to use an SD card, which is unfortunate. But with this configuration, you shouldn't have to do any of that. They've already done it. Again, this is just for reference. I know I keep saying that over and over, but a lot of this work's already done. But let's just run through it real quick. So from here, we've already got it downloaded. We're just gonna do a make menu config. And you might've seen this before. This is the Clipper configuration menu. Notice none of the options are here. Even though we already have an install, it hasn't been updated with all the parameters you need. And I think this is one of the biggest issues when installing Clipper. People don't know where to get those values. The best place to look before you start searching Google is the Clipper configuration, the printer.cfg file. If we jump back to Fluid and we take a look at printer.cfg, MakerBase has done a good job about leaving comments on how you need to get this set up. And a lot of the example configurations have this same info. If you have a board or printer that's somewhat popular, they usually have one of these on the Clipper GitHub for you. Just head to the Clipper GitHub, go to config. Here's all the examples they have available. Let's take Big Tree Tech Octopus, just for an example, it's pretty popular. Here's all the notes of how you need to set up this configuration we're getting ready to walk through. What you need to plug into that menu to make it work. So to set this thing up from scratch, on this top one, enable extra low level. We're just gonna hit space to enable that. Our microcontroller is an STMT32. So we'll just select that, hit spacebar. Our processor model is an F407. So we'll hit it. There's F407, hit space. Our bootloader should be at 48K. So we'll hit that one. Clock at eight megahertz should be fine. Communication interface, we need to update this one to make sure it says PA10 and 9, it looks like. So this top one right here. Most of the time, you're going to have this already available. Just select the one that matches the configuration they gave you. This looks to be correct. 250,000 should be fine. And no extra GPI opens needed for microcontroller startup. So we should be all set. You can hit Q to quit and yes to save it. With all that updated, ready to go, we're ready to compile. So just do a make. And this is gonna kick out our bin file. But with this board, we need to rename that file. So as soon as it's done, we'll come back. So our compile is complete and we have a bin file that needs to go on our board. So let's just take a look inside Clipper, LS Clipper, and there's an out file. So we'll take a look in there. So we'll just add forward slash out. There's our clipper.bin. Yes, we need to rename it, but first we have to get it over to the board. And I know this is confusing because this part is running on the board, but on the Linux side, we need this bin file to be on the 3D printer side to get it on our MCU. Normally what you would do is use something like WinSCP to get you from Linux, imagine this in PuTTY, to get this file over to your Windows machine so you can put it on an SD card so that you can load it on the board. And people that think that this isn't complicated, try never have done, doing, done anything like this before. This is why it seems complicated. So I'm gonna give you a, a trick here that you can get this done without using other tools, but you have to know what commands to enter. So just follow what I do. So we're gonna copy this file. So we'll do a CP, we're in clipper out, and we need clipper.bin. Okay, we're gonna copy it to something that we can access with Fluid or Mainsail. And most of the time that directory 
is in your .config directory. You can see up here I've showed you printer.data. That's in your home directory, in this MKS directory, and then in that is config. Inside that config, you see all your config files, like printer.cfg. And you will notice, if you go to main sale, that's where all of these are. You can see them from the GUI, or the web interface at least. So go back to PuTTY. We're going to copy it over to that config directory so we can pull it with the web interface. So for this board, we would do forward slash home, forward slash MKS. You could use tilde if you'd like, but we want to go direct just so I'll make sure that you know how this, all this works. Printer underscore data config and then we're just going to call it clipper.bin. We have to rename it after this, but I want to make sure you're clear on what we're doing here. We're copying it over to the config directory. We're done. Now if we go back to fluid, do a refresh here, there's clipper.bin. Now we can download it. Just right click, download. Now we have it on our PC. We can load it on an SD card. We have our blank SD card here in your downloads folder. We have our clipper.bin. We'll just copy it, put it on our SD card, and now we're ready to load it on the board after we rename it. And MakerBase, MKS, whatever you want to call them, they do this a lot. In that printer.cfg file, they say it needs to be renamed MKS skipper.bin. Okay, so we'll copy that back to our SD card, our clipper.bin, and we'll just paste it. Remember, if you can't see the extension, you can go to View, tick that box to show the extensions. Now we can take this SD card and load it on the board. So let's just power the board down. Remember, you don't want to just unplug the power on Linux. Eventually, that's going to corrupt the install. So let's go up here to Host and hit Shutdown. Now that we know Wi-Fi and everything's going to come back after we boot, and then we'll head to the board. We'll power off. Remember this slot right here, that's for Linux, but I'm using the eMMC module as my hard drive. This is for your MCU. So we'll just load the card we just flashed right there, and then we'll power up. When it powers up, it will flash that chip. Fluid is back up ready to go. That MCU has been flashed. The easiest way to tell that is to make sure that the card, the file that we put on there, has changed names. So if we take that card out, put it back on the computer. If we go to the SD card now, we have our skipper.bin file and our skipper.current file. That means it did flash the file. Now, one problem is, if you're flashing the same exact version, I tried to flash the same bin file that was on there before, it would not flash. I actually made a configuration that would not work for this MCU to prove that it would flash if it was different. So just keep that in mind. If it's not flashing, it might not like that bin file because it's the same thing that it has. Also keep in mind, we made our own bin file with that make menu config. If you go to the MakerBase GitHub, in the firmware directory, they already have that bin file ready to go. So you don't even have to make it yourself. Again, I'm just showing you how all this works. So you could just grab this file, download it. We'll just delete everything we currently have on our SD card. We'll copy the one from GitHub, paste it on our SD card, and we'll repeat the process. Turn the host off, load the card, power down, power back up. I usually wait until I see the Wi-Fi light start flashing. That way I know that Linux is up and available. And I want to see what's on this card now that we flashed. We'll just take it out. It shouldn't hurt to remove this while the board's running. And there's our .bin file with our .cur file, the current file, so we know we flashed. And if we go to fluid, we'll make sure everything's working as expected. If you go to system over here, it's going to give you MCU information. This is actually a different one than we had before. In previous videos, I might have shown this screen. It probably said this because this is the one from GitHub, but they're going to work the same. So we're good there. The other key piece to this whole Clipper thing is the MCU address in Linux. So that's the last thing we're going to take a look at.
So if we jump back into the configuration and talk about MCU, remember when we did the command to compile Clipper? We set it to this UART, USART1, PA10, PA9. Those are the pins that are on the MCU. These are the pins they've given you to use to be able to connect up to the Raspberry Pi side or the Linux side of the environment. On the Linux side, they want you to use this TTYS0. That actually stands for like teletypewriter. But basically, it's a COM port. It's S0 is a generic COM port you can use in Linux. Traditionally, we have a printer plugged into our Raspberry Pi into a USB port. Those are serial devices as well, just like this one, but they're a little easier to figure out. This one is completely integrated. But if you were going into PuTTY, like normally, if you do a Clipper install, and you just do an ls forward slash dev, you would see a serial device here that probably only shows up when you plug in your printer. But that's not here. That's how you would usually get your device. MakerBase has already given you the device to use because they've integrated this COM port into their configuration. They've basically connected it via soldering and traces on the board to use TTYS0, a generic COM port. It would be really hard to figure this out unless you knew exactly what you were looking for. Thankfully, MakerBase has done all the work but they've also provided a pretty good schematic that you can look at. They've made some pretty good diagrams. This is trying to show you there's UART in between the chip on the Raspberry Pi like environment, the Linux processor, and the MCU. If you scroll through, this is the STM32 chip. These two pins right here, remember PA9 and PA10, those are the pins that it's using to communicate over UART, transmit and receive, to the processor that's hosting Linux. But then you need to know the other side. And they have given you some listings of how they've done it. Again, printer side, they're using one, those two pins, and they're using zero over on the Pi side. That's that TTYS0. But that's all configured, again, on the board, how they configure it in Linux, and they put it all together. Fairly complicated on how this gets done, but I just wanted to give you an idea. You're not looking for a device like we would usually with a serial device. This is all integrated. It's done just a little bit differently. That's all I can say, but that's how it works. Well, my brain hurts. How about yours? So in this video, we really didn't need to do a lot of this stuff. If you buy one of these boards, Clipper's already going to be flashed. Even if you need to update it, you can just do that through mainsail or fluid. No big deal. But if you were to have to rescue this or flash that MCU, this is the process you would need to do it. Also, I've shown you all the settings and the configuration that you need to be able to get that done. And I did my best to try to explain how these boards integrate the connections in between the Linux side of the house and the printer side of the house. Usually we do that through a serial device, but that's through a USB plug. These are being integrated. And there's a few different things inside Linux that make all of that work. You need pins exposed on the MCU side, as well as the Linux side. It's all very confusing to me, but I tried to explain it the best I can. I did learn a lot today. So hopefully this was helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.